Another test drive with a Gen 5. This is a 2017 JK with a 2018 LT1 8L90 8-speed. Y'all know it's an awesome combination. It cruises along effortlessly. Has gobs of low-end torque. It's got direct injection, continuous variable valve timing. I'd say that one of the biggest transitions that we're going through now with these Gen 5s isn't so much the engines and transmissions. It's just getting it all rationalized and figured out along with GM. We've been doing these now going on two years, the Gen 5s that is, and they're just at a point where we're getting to know them much better. So this is a 2018 operating system. It has no mods to it other than the typical things that you would do to any engine conversion. But as far as the operating system goes, it's pure GM. Transmission control modules, pure GM. In the Gen 5 engines with the 8-speed, they do run an external transmission control module. And it's basically at a point now where you can plug it in, fire it up, and drive it. 1415, it wasn't quite that easy because of some of the conflicts in the operating systems. So what's happening is these Gen 5 swaps are getting rationalized. We're doing more and more of them and we're seeing the same thing over and over. We're seeing commonalities in operating systems and drivability. We're learning about gear ratios and you want to gear these Gen 5s tall. You don't want to get 538s with 37s. You want to use the torque that these engines put out. These engines are torque management bases we've discussed many times. These engines have probably more information than any of the other engines that we've supported over the years. We're not only running speed density with the manifold absolute pressure sensor, but this also has a real-time mass airflow sensor for actual airflow calculations. It has a humidity sensor so that you can detect the moisture in the air which can be important especially on those rainy days. It has a intake air temp sensor. It's got multiple fuel pressure sensors. It's got an internal fuel pump that steps the pressure up into the thousands of PSI to inject it directly into the chamber. We've got continuous variable valve timing so we can control cylinder pressure much more accurately. We have enhanced air fuel management or active fuel management which turns this engine into a four cylinder. So essentially we're taking a 6.2 liter and turning it into a 3.1 liter. The LT1 performs very similar to the L86 in my opinion. The LT1 is a more compact engine, so if you have a Jeep that's tight and you have a lot of accessories, go with the LT1. The LT1 has come down quite a bit in price, so take a look at it. It's actually a pretty good deal right now compared to what it used to be a year ago. GM, for whatever reason, still is not offering the L86s new and crate, at least the new production motors as far as I can tell. The 8L90s are available new from GM, and there's a lot of them out there now, so the prices are reasonable. Just like with the Gen 4 engines, do your homework. The operating systems in these engines and the transmissions need to be matched, just like the old Gen 4s. And even though the TCM is external, which makes it easier to swap out, it still has to be matched to your engine control module properly. Another area the Gen 5s are starting to come alive is in the aftermarket. We're seeing more and more companies supporting the Gen 5s, camshafts, intakes, electronics, harnesses. So today you can literally buy a Gen 5 and throw a blower on it, put a cam in it, pretty much anything you want, just like we did with the Gen 4s. They're not quite as well supported as the Gen 4s, obviously. They've only been out for four or five years, but they're going to get there. Does that mean the Gen 4 is dead? No, not by a long shot. The Gen 4 is still a viable engine. And remember, we're not really talking about double-digit improvements in economy or performance between the Gen 4 and Gen 5, like we saw between the small and big block Chevy and the original LS. We're just talking about a few percent here, a few percent there. So don't, don't think that your Gen 4 engine is obsolete. And if you're considering doing a Gen 4 swap and it makes sense, you have an early JK, you have an engine, do it. You're not going to regret it. The technology in this LT1 is pretty much the pinnacle for GM overhead valve engines. And to understand that, you really have to go back 50, 60 years at the beginnings of the small block Chevy in the mid 50s They were very advanced engines at the time, just going to overhead valve from flathead design and running higher and higher compression and the oiling systems. Uh, remember, it wasn't much before that we were running splash oiling systems. We weren't running high pressure oiling systems. We were running no or low pressure oiling systems. So when the small block Chevy came out and was putting out close to 300 horsepower, that was a revelation. And over the years, GM has stuck with the overhead valve design, and it's interesting to see what some of the other manufacturers, especially from other countries, did with the dual overhead cams and the four valves and all the other technology. GM pretty much stuck 
with the architecture of an overhead valve engine. And they got a lot of crap for it, but really at the end of the day, if you look at what these V8s are doing for the simplicity and the robustness, they're hanging up there with some of these more advanced engines and doing it at a much lower cost. So if you look at this LT1 and the technology that's built into it, not only do we have high compression, cam phasing, but the block design, the strength, you gotta remember, just back in the 1990s, the K motors were putting out less than 200 horsepower and we're running two bolt mains. This motor's got a six bolt main, all aluminum skirted block. Internals in these LT engines are taking four or 500 horsepower right, right out of the box from GM. So we've really come a long way, not only in the electronics, but in the hardware. And it's just gonna get better from here. If you look at the LT4, the LT5, and some of the other things coming out, the 10-speed transmissions, we're basically getting a free lunch. We're getting more performance, better economy, better drivability. There's really no downside to these new engines from the old engines. I remember back in the 70s and 80s, we were all worried about losing performance engines in automobiles because of the emissions and all the regulatory stuff that was coming around. If you look at a mid-70s to 80s performance vehicle, it's pretty pathetic. Even the Corvettes were 200-ish horsepower. So if you think we're more than double that horsepower today, and not just the horsepower, the torque, and then you look at the economy of these engines, there's really no downside. We've come full circle, and we've got the power, we've got the economy, we've got the reliability, we've got the longevity, we've got the lower emissions that make the, the authorities happy. We're really in the golden age of performance, in my opinion. The downside of these engines is integrating them into an engine conversion is they're more complex than carburetors and points. So we need to use electronics to do that, and that's really where all the magic happens. So integrating an LT into a JK, um, really wasn't that much harder than integrating in an LS. Integrating an LT into a JL and a JT is coming. We've already got an LT and a JL. Again, it just comes down to the electronics and coding, and you're going to see that the LT and the JL is going to be a phenomenal combination. But I guess we're at a point now where we've done enough LTs. We're not only comfortable with them, but it just makes sense now to use an LT if you have a later JK, a JL. You don't want to be putting an early engine into a late model chassis, get, get in trouble with the emissions or whatever, because there's just no downside to not do it. So I think that if there were any new news on the LT, it's just that the LT is now integrated properly. It is a more than viable swap. As far as I'm concerned, driving this LT1 with this 8-speed is about the best driving JK there is. I've driven Hemi's, I've driven, just last week I drove a uh, turbocharger, lots and lots of superchargers.